Hands down, lift it up through your side waist, side chest. Move your arm bones back to bring your shoulder blades into your back, and then rest your hands on your thighs and close your eyes. Descend your thighs. From equal and even weight in your sitting bones, lengthen up through the front of your body. Press your shoulder blades into your back ribs to lift your chest. As you lift your chest, take your abdomen back so that you're still having your shoulder, shoulders directly over your hips. So sometimes when you press your shoulder blades into your back, you lift your chest too much and you push your pelvis forward. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. Take slow, even breaths. And then gently open your eyes. Come forward to child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Extend your arms forward. Press your hands strongly into the floor. Now keep your forearms lifted up. Then descend your, the area between your shoulder blades towards the floor. So move your chest towards the floor as your arms stay stable. Come up to your hands and knees. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips high, come up to Anupushwanasana, downward facing dog. Here too, press your hands down into the floor, and slightly forward. And then move the area between your shoulder blades Towards your thighs, towards the floor. At the same time, press your thighs back.
Stretch out, relax your legs. Lift the fronts of your thighs up, lift the backs of your thighs up. Keep your abdomen away while engaged as you bring your chest further and further towards your legs. Walk your hands back toward your feet. Come into Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift your quadriceps, lift the backs of your legs. Let your head lengthen down towards the floor. Elbows to the ceiling, inhale, come all the way back up. All right, we did this last week, we're going to do it again. So you can have uh, something underneath your hips um, or not, but you'll lie on the floor, your legs straight up, and then we'll lower one leg at a time. Um, and we'll probably do both legs as well. So once uh, you have something under your hips and you're lying on the floor, take your arms over your head. Press your fingernails into the floor. Squeeze your legs together, spread your toes. Attempt to straighten your legs. Keep your left leg where it is, lower your right leg to the floor. Notice if your left leg turned out, turn it in. Keep your left leg straight. Attempt to straighten your right leg. That's uh, not quite. And then lift your right leg back up. Reset. And lower your left leg down. Rotate your right thigh in if it rotated out. First, keep the Focus on the up leg, the right leg, make it straight. And then the second point of focus is the left leg, keeping it straight. Then lift the left leg back up. All right, so keep both legs straight, lower the right leg down. Lift the right leg up, lower the left leg down. Lift the left leg up, right leg. Right leg up. Left leg, left leg up, and now you're going to lower the right leg, and then switch kind of in the middle, so about 45 degrees. So the right leg comes up, the left leg comes down, and switch, switch. Keep your legs straight. Look at those legs. It helps them be straight. Keep switching. All right, both legs up. Bring your abdomen down. Then squeeze your legs together. Lower your legs about halfway down. And 
Bring them back up. Take a breath. If this is uh, extra challenging for you, you can grab the sides of the sticky mat and push the sticky mat uh, away from you toward, or so you're pushing toward your hips. Otherwise, keep your hands overhead, fingernails pressing into the floor, lower your legs halfway down. Lift them back up. And breath. Lower your legs halfway down. Squeeze them together. Lift them back up. Lower your legs a little further down. A little beyond that. And lift them back up. Hug your knees in. We're all to your side. Come up to Dandasana. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm about to roll. All right. So I know apparently we've discussed this as far as uh, the Masana and your, your um, hip flexors and stuff. So you're going to do it the way that works. So you can bend both legs, take your hands behind, roll your shoulders back, or over do this part. And then lift one leg up. And then lower that leg down, lift the other leg up. Lower that one down, first leg. And second leg. Oh no, no. All right, so you can either stick with that. Or, uh, <laughs> so this is not my favorite pose, and one of the ways I create more time in the pose is I keep my mind occupied on the show. So I, I come into Namasana like this, and then I do these toe taps so that it's distracting. So you're going, and my knees are cracking, so that's also distracting. So you're going for a straight leg when the leg lifts up. Crack, crack. And come back to, or come to the bottom mass and I'll let your legs rest for a second. So I'm able to do Navasana a lot longer if I do that. Um, I guess it's not truly Navasana, but anyway. One more time. So bring your legs forward. You can take your hands back or forward so that with the hands forward, when the legs come up, they would be about in line with your knees. So roll your shoulders back, lift your chest, either way. And then one leg and then the other. Feel a little bit like a pigeon, my head moving back and forth as my legs move. And back So feet together, knees apart, lean forward. All right, come to downward facing back. 
Or come onto your hands and knees, or your toes underneath, Padma Kushwanasana. So after doing those uh, abdominal exercises, for me, it helps me bring my abdomen in so I have less worry about the, the sway back that can happen in the flexible. Walk your hands back towards your feet, fold forward, Tamasana. If you're able, bring your feet together, your legs together. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Place your hand on your hips, elbows should sit the inhale come all the way up. Alright, if you want to use blocks for some standing poses, have some blocks. Stand in Tadasana. Lower your shoulders back, lift your chest. See if you still have a little uh, activation of the abdomen. If not, recreate it. Bring your hands in front of your chest. And either step or jump your legs apart. Turn your right leg out, your left leg in. Bring your right hand down for to teach your kinas. Now, in the first downward dog, I said bring the area between your shoulder blades towards your legs. Now see if you can bring the area of the shoulder blades towards the front of your room. Or wherever the camera is, I would guess. And as that area comes forward, roll the abdomen from the right side to the left side. And press through your left foot. Inhale, come up. Turn to the other side. Turn your left leg all the way out. Turn your right leg in. With an exhalation, bring your left arm down. Then, bring the area between the shoulder blades forward and roll the abdomen towards the ceiling. From the left to the right, roll up. Press through your right foot, inhale, come up. Turn your toes to the front. Turn your right leg out. Turn your left leg in. Bend your right leg. Roll your chest to the left. So the chest should be facing directly right forward. Then keep that as you bring your right hand down to the block. Take your left arm over. or the floor, or wherever. Then bring the area between the shoulder blades forward and roll your abdomen from right to left. As if you were trying to completely turn to the ceiling. Then lift your left arm straight up. Inhale, come up. 
Turn to the other side. First, turn your chest to face the camera. Or I think everyone's facing the camera. Then bend your left leg. Reach out over your left leg. Take your right arm over your head. Bring your chest forward. And then roll your abdomen towards the ceiling. Lift your right arm up, inhale. Okay, I'm going to show something from the side. Uh, this, I'm going to show the incorrect uh, meaning of what I'm talking about. So hopefully, yeah, this, should, this should be obvious. Get under the white wall. <laughs> there we go. All right. So when I say move the chest forward and roll the abdomen up, I don't mean this, all right? So from the side that looks like, this is how I used to do this pose anyway. I think it's done this way in any sara. Like this, like this, uh, like it's an arc. It's, it's all in this area. It's not in the rest of the body. So the rest of the body stays still as the chest lifts and the abdomen turns. It's less of a movement than the other one. All right? So we'll try it again. From Tadasana, take your arms and legs wide. Turn to your right. Bend your right leg. Take your right arm down. Take your left arm overhead. All right, so you can try them in a different order and that might help. So roll your abdomen first and then squeeze your shoulder blades into your back to bring your chest a little bit towards the camera, not a lot. Mm -hmm. Better. Lift your right arm up, or left arm up, inhale, come up. Turn to the other side. Exhale, bring your arm down, right arm overhead. Turn your chest. And once your chest is turned as much as it can, squeeze your shoulder blades into your back to bring the area of the spine between the shoulder blades forward. Then lift your right arm up, inhale, come up. Turn your feet forward, step them back together. All right, so take your feet hip width apart. If uh, you have uh, lower back issues, you can take your hands to your hip and then to the floor. If not, interlock your arms above your head and pull forward. The nice thing about being able to interlock your elbows is it gives you just a little extra weight to pull your torso down. Place your hands on your hips, elbows to the ceiling, inhale, come up. All right, back to Tadasana. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Which way did I step out first? Take your arms and legs wide. And try to switch. Turn to your right. Come into Trikonasana, Petita Trikonasana. Right. Roll your chest towards the ceiling here. Keep that. Take your left hand to your waist. Bend your right leg. Step your left leg in, take your right hand forward. 
All right, keep your right leg bent, lift your left leg into the air. Lift it in line with your hip, or maybe even a little higher. So go your head up. Uh, you can go a little higher with your top leg. There we go. And then rotate your chest more with your leg bent. It's easier. And then start to straighten your right leg. If you have balance, you can lift your left arm up. Then bring your left hand to your waist. But you're gonna exit the same way you came in. Bend your leg, wait there a moment. And then reach back with your left leg along waist. So you're in this, uh, we teach a partial Kamasana position. Lift your top arm up, straighten your leg, and see if you can get a little more turn in your chest here. Press through your left foot, inhale, come up. Turn to the other side. Turn your left leg out. Bring your left hand. Rotate your chest. Bend your left leg. Take your right hand on your waist. Step in. Take your left hand forward on a little toe side of the foot. Now, lift your right leg. So it's in line with your hip or a little higher. Rotate your chest here. And keep it rotated as you start to straighten your left leg. Then if you have the balance, you can lift whatever arm it says, right arm up. You would think with only a choice of two, I don't know. <laughs> Bring your hand back to your waist. Bend your left leg, reach back strongly with your right leg. Here, pause here, and then lift your right arm up, start to straighten your left leg. Press through your right foot, inhale, lift up, turn your toes to the front, bring your legs back to you. Awesome. All right, we're going to do a little interlude of a pose that I haven't done in a long time. Uh, Garudasana, eagle pose. So if you need a wall, have a wall nearby. This is eagle pose. All right, I'm going to do my real right and left for this one. So bend your knees, pull your abdomen in. Lift your right leg up, wrap it around your left. Squeeze your legs together, lift your chest, keep both knees bent. Lift your arms up, take your right elbow underneath your left, and then draw the forearms together. That one's good. Forearms are together, or the elbows are together. Press the arms into each other to create space between the shoulder blades. So this is the opposite movement we were doing earlier with the, sh the shoulder blades coming in and the spine moving towards the chest. This is the opposite, just the shoulder right moving away from each other. Release your arms, release your legs. Take a breath, bend your knees, lift your left leg up, wrap it around your right. Squeeze your legs together, lift your arms up. 
Take your left arm underneath your right. Once the elbows connect, move the forearms closer to each other. Once the forearms connect or the hands connect, squeeze the elbows towards each other. Broaden across the upper back. And sitting down into your knees. And into the area between your shoulder blades. And then release your arms, release your legs. Now, yeah. back to the other, the lateral standing poses, actually. So we're going to do the revolved, revolved triangle and revolved side angle. So stand in your mat, so I'm going to end up facing my back to you. Take your arms and legs wide. Turn to your right. Turn your left hip all the way around so it's facing the short edge of your mat. Keep both legs straight. Rotate towards the wall behind you. And then keep that rotation. Bring your left hand down to the big toe side, little toe side, on a block, off a block, whatever works. Bring your left hip forward, and from that left hip coming forward, rotate your torso more and more. Then once the torso is rotated as much as possible, bring the spine in between the shoulder blades, moving the chest towards the wall, behind, the wall that you're facing right now, forward. And you can lift your right arm up. Then press strongly with your left heel and windmill your arms up. Turn to the left. Turn so that your hips are facing the little, uh, the short side of your mat. Turn to the wall behind you. Turn, turn, turn. And then bring your right hand down. You can start with your left hand at your waist. Move your left hip back, your right hip forward. And rotate your chest more and more. So rotate your abdomen, rotate your chest. You want both shoulder blades on top of each other. Or you want your shoulder blades on top of each other. Then bring the spine in between the shoulder blades, move the chest forward. And if you have your balance, lift your left arm up. You might be even able to turn just a little bit more with the arm up. Press through your right heel. Inhale, lift up. Bring your hands to your hips. All right, so that's one way to get in, is to turn first and then go down. Uh, as far as the way your anatomy works, you will get further into the pose if you go down first and then turn. So we're gonna try that. So turn to your right, with your hands on your hips, and fold forward. So Parshvotanasana. All right, and here, bring your left hip forward, your right hip back. Keep your left hand where it is. Bring your right hand to your hip, and now turn towards the back wall. 
You also might get further into the pose because this is the second time. But so uh, when you practice this week, uh -huh. uh, try it the other way around. So turn as much as you can. Turn from the abdomen, turn from the chest, turn from the shoulders. And then when you've got all the turn you can get, you can lift your right arm up. Press through your left heel. Actually, I guess we can come back the same way we came. So one hand to your side of the front foot, hands on your hips, inhale, come up. Turn to the left. Pull forward over your front leg, left leg. Now here, take your left hip back, your right hip forward. Take your left hand on your waist, rotate your chest towards the back wall. Rotate from your abdomen, rotate from your chest, rotate from your shoulders. So stack your shoulders on top of each other. When you've gotten all the turn you can get, lift your left arm up. Then bring your left arm down, one hand either side of the front foot. Place your hands on your hips, come back up, turn your toes in, step your feet hip width apart. Grab your elbows or not, and fold forward. Place your hands on your hips, inhale, come up. Stand to the Take your arms in the wide. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn to your right. Bend your right leg. Bring your left hand on the ground on the big toe side of your foot. Rotate your chest and turn towards the back wall. If you can, even if your foot comes up, take your hand to the little toe side of the foot. Don't worry about the top hand right now. Just see how this feels in your hips and the turn. Bring your hands to the big toe side. Inhale, come back up. We're going to complete the pose, not to worry. Turn to the left. Bend your left leg. Take your right hand down on the big toe side of the foot. Turn your chest. Turn, turn, turn. Then, if you can, Take the right arm on the little toe side of the foot. And turn, turn, turn. Come back up. All right. Now this time, we did this in a different class this week. So you're going to come, you can just watch for a second. You're going to come into this lunging position, but you're going to place both hands on the leg and you're going to push down. Then I keep my same leg as hand pushing down as I take my other arm across and try to get in more deeply. All right? So that's how we're going to come in this time. All right, take your legs apart, keep your forearms together. Turn to your right. Bend your right leg. 
Then place both hands on your right leg. Lean into your right leg. Push it down. Push the thigh down. Keep your right hand on the right leg. Take your left arm across. And bring your left hand down towards the floor or towards the block or whatever. But keep your right hand on your leg pushing down. See if you can get more turn here. And then if you want to complete the pose, take your right arm over. Come back to the lunge. And then back up to standing. So hopefully that helps. That helps me tremendously. But it may not help you at all. Who knows? All right, turn to the other side. There's plenty of things I've done that have not helped me at all, so I'm sure they help somebody. Bend your left leg. Put both hands on your left leg, push it down. And deep into the lunge. Keep your left hand on your left leg. Take your right arm across. Bring it down. Rotate your chest. And you can finish the pose by taking your left arm over your head. Turn, turn, turn. Bring your hands to your thigh. Lift yourself back up. Time for a well-deserved rest. So, Prasada Padottanasana, which I'm sure is not a rest for all of you. Hold down, rest your head. So, if you need something to rest your head on, grab something to rest your head on. Walk your hands forward, place your hands on your hips, come all the way back up. All right, so this isn't very fair, <laughs> but after all that tiring work, and I'm pretty hot, uh, um, we're going to try to do a three. So plan ahead, knowing that if you need the wall for your hands, it'll be nearby. So the way to measure is to measure and then bend your knee and step back. I'm probably going to fly all over the place, but it's more entertaining for you if I do that. And I, I do strive to be entertaining. All right, or a chair, a chair would work well too. Okay. Take your arms and legs apart. Turn your palms to the ceiling, lift your arms up. Bring the area between the shoulder blades forward. Turn to your right. Bend your right leg. Lean over your right leg. Turn the back hip in. So your hips are now facing the same direction. Look forward. Look where you're going. Step in. Press down strongly with the big toe side of your right foot. As you come up. Yeah. Lift that back leg, yeah, straighten the bottom leg, and then bend your right leg, reach back with your left, come back to your dressing the one. Keep your arms up, straighten your front leg, turn to the center. Yeah, turn around. Turn to your left. Bend your left leg. Lift your chest some more, take your arms back. And exhalation, lean over your front leg. Turn the back hip in. So turn it in here and keep it in here. 
Press down strongly with your left big toe as you launch yourself forward. Either using a chair or a wall, in this case, a old entertainment center. Bend your left leg, reach back with your right leg. Your Virjasana one. Straighten your right leg. Turn your toes to the front. Step your feet together. All right, Virasana. So one of the things it says in the book, like I know, is that Virasana is good to rest the legs. I think it says that in the book. I guess I have to look that up. I've heard it many times. So knees together, feet apart, sit back between your heels. Now, whatever height you need, might be six blocks, a chair, maybe the floor. Rest your thighs down. Rest your hands on your thighs or on your feet. Either one works. My hands don't reach my feet very easily. Roll your shoulders back. They probably would if I was sitting on the floor. And lock your fingers. Turn your palms out. Lift your arms up. Squeeze your upper arm, and by this, I mean this part of the arm, the bicep, tricep area, in. Lift your wrist up higher and higher. Bring your hands back down. Change the interlock. Send your arms forward, and lift them up. Squeeze your upper arms in, lift your wrist, not your ribs, wrist higher and higher. Bring your hands back down, and lock your hands behind your back, roll your shoulders back, lift your arms. Change the interlock of your fingers, roll your shoulders back, lift your arms. And release, rotate your shoulders. All right, so get upside down in some form or fashion. Uh, so headstand would be an obvious choice. Uh, if you're not doing headstand, you could do um, dog pose. Uh, you could do, um, could even do legs up the wall because we've done a lot of leg work today and that would feel awfully good. If you're away from the wall, make sure you're really away from the wall. If you're at the wall, make sure you're actually at the wall. You'd rather do a couple handstands and do that. If you're in Shirtasana, press your forearms down, lift your shoulder blades up your back. In this case, up towards your waist. And then move the spine in a little bit. Not, not, not really a back bend, but just 
and the shoulder blades pressing onto the back ribs. Take the sides of your waist back. Stand up through the big toe side of each foot. Neck and jaw soft. If you start gripping your jaw in this pose, you will not like it. It'll make your neck hard, um, make it even more difficult for uh, any kind of problems with your neck. Press the midpoint of your forearm into the floor. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Lift up through the inner leg. Notice your hands, are your hands gripping? Make them soft. And then begin to lower your legs down. As you lower your legs down, continue to keep your awareness in your forearms, pushing your forearms into the floor. As you lower your legs down. And then rest in Ardha Gavirasana. A relaxed version of Your head and back up. All right. So we're going straight towards shoulder stand type things. So first, Chatush Padasana, sometimes called bridge. So lie on your back with your feet close to your hips. Notice where your feet are now. Notice where your knees are now. Even without looking at them, you can kind of feel what the feet are doing if you pay attention. Like, okay, my left big toe isn't pressing as much as my right. That means that when I go up, my left leg is more likely to turn out. So I press down with both big toes at the foot, lift my hips up a little bit, and roll my shoulders under here. Then I continue to lift my hips by pressing my feet into the floor. And if I press down with the big chest out of the foot, it keeps my legs from splaying out. I press my upper arms down into the floor to lift my hips up more. I press my heels down to lift my hips up more. Keep your neck and throat soft, your jaw relaxed. And if you lose concentration in your feet, notice what happens to your knees. You might get a little wobbly. Your upper arms down to see if you can move that area between the shoulder blades towards the sky, towards your chin. Uh, 
and then slowly lower your hips back down to the floor. Right. So shoulder stand is next. So if you don't do Sarvangasana, you can repeat the pose. You can repeat that pose with support under your hips, either a stack of blankets or a block. Otherwise, set up for Sarvangasana. Whatever you do, you do. You can also do uh, supported Setibanda Savagasana. You know that one? You don't have a holster here, so I mean, it happens just now. You can also use a chair. We'll be here for a bit. My father is very into precision. I told him the difference between precision and accuracy. He does not like it when I say I'll be there in a bit. <laughs> You want me to be precise or accurate? Then, uh, coming up into Sarvangasana or supported Situbanda or supported Chatush, you're going to roll your shoulders under to open your chest, bring that spine, and, and then if you're coming to Sarvangasana, you throw your legs over your head and then roll your shoulders under more. You can also come up using the wall. I'm going to place my hands as low down by my back as I can. I lift the skin of my back up. And then from there, I lift my legs up. And then once I'm up, the first thing I remind myself to do is not hurt my jaw. Back out of my once my jaw is relaxed and my neck is relaxed, I can work on the pose. I press my upper arms into the floor, using my legs strong and steady to lift myself further out of the pose. And then notice the weight on my shoulders. If I take my legs too far forward, the weight will be more in the back of the head and the neck. If I take him too far back, my weight will be more in my elbows and my hands, and my hands will get tired. If your hands get tired in this pose, it's probably because your legs are leaning back or you're piking. If you get headaches in this pose, it's probably because your legs are too far forward. So you want the weight on your shoulders. Sounds obvious, but it's not easy to do to get it right on the, on the spine of the scapula. And at the same time, keep your neck soft and your jaw release. If you think you're leaning back too much, one way to test that is to release your hands. And see if you can stay up. In order to stay up, you have to engage the area just below the buttocks, top the hamstring, move that area forward.
And I think the last week I mentioned the difference between picking up a child that was uh, wanting to be picked up and not wanting to be picked up. Child is the same. That's true here too. If you go all floppy, it'll be harder to maintain the pose. You have to want to be picked up. So just like in Navasana, where we kept ourselves entertained by <laughs> moving our legs around, you can do that here. Keep your left leg where it is and lower your right leg halfway to the floor. So this is another, um, similar to Virabhasana 3, we did this uh, along our backs, and we did Virabhasana 3, and now we're doing it in Sarvagasana, and you can also do it in Shirtasana. I mean, the full pose, the leg goes all the way to the floor. And if you're thinking about Virabhadrasana 3, you should just go halfway. Then lift your right leg up. Reset. And lower your left leg up. Keep both quadriceps engaged. Notice how the top leg likes to turn out. That happens. Uh, and then Vera Grossman 3 as well. One of the, the, like that's on the floor, wants to turn out, it's stopped by the floor. But sometimes it turns out a little bit and then your hips shift. Then lift your left leg back up. Reset. Turn your right leg out about 45 degrees. Take it over to the side. Not halfway down. Lift it back up. Turn your left leg out about 45 degrees and lower it halfway down. And lift it back up. All right, so we're going to go for Ekapada again and then bring it down a little further. So, first, lower the right leg down halfway. Take a breath. And then, see if with the exhalation, you can get the leg to go further down. Lift your right leg back up. Lower your left leg halfway down. Now with your next exhalation, see if it goes down a little further. Lift it back up. Turn your right leg out. Lower it halfway down, so partial ekapada. And then with your next exhalation, lower it down towards the floor. Some of you will find this one easier than the other one. Lift your right leg back up. Turn your left leg out about 45 degrees. Lower that one down halfway to the floor. Square your hips. Your next exhalation. Lower it towards the floor. Now lift it back up. Bring your legs overhead in the last one that's available to you. If not, you can take your feet wider and see if that works. If not, stay in Sarvagasana. Grab your big toes for a supta kanasana. Press your thighs towards the ceiling, take your legs apart, pulling onto your big toes. Then bring your legs back together. And continue to hold on to your big toes. Slowly lower yourself back down. Holding on to your big toes kind of slows the, the flop. Rest there for a moment. 
That was a longer shoulder stand than I normally do. Quite a bit longer. Move toward your head side, rest your shoulders on the floor. Everyone can go to this point now. Whether you were doing chutush or satubanda, your shoulders are on the floor, your neck's on, or your head's on the floor. Roll to your side, lift yourself up. Sit in Sukhasana. If you can sit on the floor, sit on the floor. Have uh, something in front of you, a couple bricks, a chair, to rest your forehead on. Fold forward. Change the cross of your legs. Lift yourself back up. Come to Shavasana. So whatever, I think we did prone last week. Uh, you can do that again if you wish, or you can do regular, it's fine. All your shoulders under. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. And use the next few moments to focus on your breath.
Keeping your breath. Bend your knees. Support your head as you roll to your side. Roll a little further to your side and use your arms to lift yourself back up to seating. Take your arms to the side, lift your chest. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste.